you are listening to the Gourmet Pens Club podcast. This is a collective of creators and callings that bring us together. Here are your hosts, Aziza and Candice. Hello! Welcome to episode 40 of the Gourmet Pens Club podcast. 40. 40. That seems like a lot, but also like nothing in that. So it's almost six, six, <laughs> six, <laughs> six weeks, six days. It is four six zero. years. So it's six weeks plus. Okay, so uh, <laughs> um, I've forgotten math. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Aziza, aka Gourmet Pens, and let's welcome my also math forgotten co-host. I am. I am the co-host. I know that six sevens are forty two. So anyway, <laughs> so it's like six sevens minus two days. <clears throat> minus two days. That's right. I am the other co-host. I am Candice Inks and Anchors. We're ready for the fun. So. Let's, Let's hang, hang out. out. We're getting better. We're getting better. Uh, but if not, she will make us sound good. <laughs> she always makes us sound good. She, yeah, uh, pretty much. Okay, so we are going to skip our usual style of uh, kind of going through acquisitions and stuff because the plan was to continue on the heels of our last episode where we are going to share some of the community pen lover feedback for pen makers and. I think, and then so what we thought we would do was just read through each comment, and it's nicely tidied and curated. So don't worry, you're not going to be here for like three years, and kind of discuss it, see how we feel, analyze it. So <laughs> we are going to continue. Uh, we have a couple notes. Do you think we should go in any particular order, or just as we receive them? I will leave that up to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go with the order that we have just so we don't get confused. So the first thing is this was a comment on the YouTube podcast for the last episode by Thor Hilda. And this is not so much for bakers, but I think feedback for the pen community, like as another pen lover to other pen lovers. Um, they said, when you refer to pen makers, you are talking about artisans who create custom handcrafted pens that can be commissioned according to individual preferences. However, this definition is quite specific and does not align with the broader understanding that most people have when they hear the term pen makers. Perhaps using terms like artisans or craftsperson would be more accurate. And I, that's a, a really good point because they are more than just pen makers. Because so you, is that to distinguish, say, between pilot and I other guess pen so. Makers that I guess so. Are doing um, it in bulk because even even makers who are doing kit pens, they are still picking a material, turning down the material, uh, putting it on a particular kit, mm -hmm. and I mean. That to me, that would be craftsperson right there. Yeah. And I think it's maybe a spectrum where you have someone who's making is an artisan, no matter what. And then the more elaborate they do, like if they're doing metalwork or pouring blanks or stack blanks or something, um, it can become more of an artisan. So when we say pen makers, it is not something that we mean with any dismissal of their skills and talent and work. It's, it's really just simplifying a term a simplified yeah. term to refer to all these people that we harass with our pen needs uh, yeah i think i i think when we were referring to pen makers we meant the ability to do a custom order yes potentially yeah. right so it's not like and i mean you could probably speak to edison for example and get a one-off made i'm not sure yes how, yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah he still does customs yeah um, so so anyone yeah. that that does that i mean um i don't know if shown still does that? I don't think so. I, I think don't just, think so. Yeah, yeah. But the whole so, shown team that definitely qualifies as an artisan, artisanal. They, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, it's definitely a broad term and not meant to be narrow in any. In yes. Any way. Yes, and and it is totally used with love and affection. Like Absolutely. it is, it's a positive term. But thank you, Thor Hilda, for pointing that out. And we just want to echo that we agree with this. So okay, the the first comment, I'm not going to say who it's from, uh, because I did say I would leave it anonymous. Uh, everyone who did submit their feedback did leave names, but just out of respect, I'm going to leave it out. If they want their name shared, we can always discuss it later. So the first one is 
quote, <laughs> your pens are awesome, but like, what's the price range? And I don't want to inquire and be like the person that is, look, I am poor. I don't want to waste your time, but also aspirationally, what's the range so I could shoot for it? And that is very fair. That is exactly what I was talking about last time, because I feel yeah. I feel like it's it's, you know, you have sometimes you have no idea what some of these pen makers are charging yep. and and you want to know because you may not be in the market, but you just you want to know. Yeah. But and, and this person aspirationally, it is right. Like, what if you want to save for it or plan for a commission down the road or something? And I think I'm guessing that the response to this from pen makers would be that they don't mind being asked even if you're not ready to buy. But I always feel like, you know, when you go into a store and there's a salesperson and they're super pushy and stressful, and then they end up helping you, but you still don't want what they have offered. Mm -hmm. So you turn them down and it's like, I feel really bad for using all your time and not buying anything. So that is kind of how I feel when pestering a pen maker. <laughs> also, I I think there's a... Um... A, you know, transparency is always good, right? Because yes. I don't know, you don't want to feel like you're getting charged more than the next person. Not that you would be necessarily, but right. I get it that prices change. And, yep. you know, I may or may not have a specific pen maker, an example in mind, but yeah, I'll just do it, you know, trying an analogy. I used to go yep. to this hairdresser and I would go in, I would get my hair done and I would say, okay, how much is it? And I would get a different price every single time. And I have no idea how this person priced their services. Was right. it because my hair was an inch longer than the last time? Was it? And it's not that the price kept going up. It just fluctuated. And I had no idea. Right. And it was right. just like, what are like, you doing? Please explain. Like, just, Help me understand. I know, I know. And I don't even think that they could probably explain it. Like it was just, I think right. they just kind of, I have no idea. Anyway, you kind of don't want to get that feeling either, right? Like it, it's a yeah. different price all the time. And it would just be helpful. It's like, Okay, my price is, you know, 170. Yep. But if I use a material from Brooks, it's yep. more expensive. If I use right. a material from Danks Blanks, it's more expensive. Yes. And I add a premium for that material because and that's totally fair, right? I right. think it's totally fair because they, I think that'd be beautiful. Yeah. Uh because then you could have an idea of what yeah. you might be looking at. Yeah. Uh even if it's not down to the dollar, it it does give you some time on your own to think about it without asking them a million questions. And yeah. then they have to answer each person individually, which is time consuming for them. Yeah. So I hope that this is something that will continue to improve for pen makers. I mean, not just for the enjoyment and benefit of pen lovers and buyers, but also for their peace of mind and for the sake of saving their time. Uh, okay. The next one. This one is a lot of pen makers use Yovo or Bach nibs, but there's still a wide array of difference in terms of quality. Ideally, I would love if all small makers could do some nib tuning. For example, Edison Pens does an incredible job of tuning all their nibs. But short of that, I would love to make sure that there is some quality control. That's a tough one. It's um, I don't disagree. It's just tough. <laughs> it's very tough. And also, even if the nib is tuned, it may not be tuned to how you like it. Right, which is always right. something you have to keep in mind, and you know that's a good point. But it's also, you're specific about feedback, yeah. And like personally, for me, I don't want feedback, right. so it would be to totally different tune-ups, yeah, for either of us. I know that I find like a, a vast majority of pen makers in the U.S. anyway get their Bach nibs from Kirk at Pen Realm, right? I feel like I don't. I don't know if that's actually the case, but I know that many of them say, oh, and I've got, I can do Bach nibs and they're all tuned by Kirk. Right. And it does bring a whole lot of comfort in knowing that it's tuned by him because I have yet to get a nib from someone who has said it's tuned by Kirk to be yeah. inferior, right? Even if right. it doesn't give as much feedback as I'd like, I tend yeah. to find them to be to my liking. But yeah, it's, it is tough because I guess a lot of pen makers I think almost all of them at, the, at a minimum say, I know that it writes. Yeah. And it is also something that is time consuming mm -hmm. to smooth each nib, uh, clean out the pen. And some people don't yeah. like their pens dipped. Yeah, that's another thing. It is it is tough. And I wonder if it might be better for pen makers to purchase their nibs pre-tuned and like all of them be able to offer something that is already pre-tuned. Mm -hmm. To be fair, I don't think I've ever gotten a bad Yovo nib personally. Like I... one that just didn't write or 
yeah. was, was was like misaligned or anything like that. I mean, I mean, I'm not super picky about my nibs. So yeah. for me, I can understand the desire to have this, but I personally, I don't need it. I would also, we were just talking about the previous point about having um, the a price list. So they could also have something where they offer an untuned nib for like ten dollars and then a tuned nib for like 15 or something i disagree i disagree (laughs) how dare she no this is good Uh, controversy yes (laughs) yeah i I think i think at a minimum it should be there's a minimum level of how that nib should write yeah and if and, and i mean that might be untuned if yeah. what you classify as untuned, but yeah. I don't think you should call it untuned. I think it should just be, it should write. Like factory. I mean, the fa- ideally they should. And then, but if you want it tuned specifically to your needs. Yeah. And I mean, then, then you're it's something different. Nib work almost. Like, well, right? I, and I mean, but this is how some of the retailers differentiate themselves. I don't know if there's a pen maker that comes to the top of my pen artisan. Yeah. That's also a nibmeister, like in that category. I know Sometimes when I want to buy a pen like a Twisby, yeah, I will buy it from um, Nib Grinder, Mark Backus, or Nib Smith, Dan Smith. Yeah. I was drawing a blank. I will sometimes specifically, or Apple Boom. Yeah. I yeah. will go specifically to those retailers yeah. for the non-artisan type pens. Yes. Yeah. Because I know it also comes with a tuning service that's yeah. included in the price, which I think right. is gold. And I think yeah. it's well worth your effort, as yeah. you have told us on this very podcast mm-hmm. with a Mont Blanc, that you were too impatient oh, yeah. to wait, to, oh, wait to have it tuned. Yeah. And it turned out to be a disaster, right? And like, I mean, you, I could have sent it back. They right. would have fixed it, but... It's a pain. Who wants pain. to do that, right? And you will have to wait probably a little bit. Worth right? it. Right? Because... But... It's I mean, worth it. It's completely yeah. worth it. Because yeah. just the tuning is 20 to $30, like on top of the price that you pay minimum. Yeah. And that's, that's if you take it to a pen show and make yeah. a, an appointment and sit down and, you know, have it tuned, which is again, worth it. But in my opinion, like it's, it just, I have this auto, my auto hut pen, the model three pen. Is I that your it, pink and violet? Pink and violet yeah, one, yeah. Right. I got it from Apple Boom, And every time, every time I take it out to write with it, it's like, Oh, I just love the way this oh, writes. I mean, that's nice. It's, it's so it really is does not happen every single time right when i yeah. write with that with a pen also i am shocked that you still have it but it should i have it and not only do i have it aziza but it's still inked <laughs> there is a period of time <laughs> <laughs> it has been like 3 months that is a long yeah, time for yeah. you yeah i think there was i think there was a two or three week period that it wasn't inked cuz i switched that's you know, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. You, but you i still have it but i reached for it again and i said no 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 i got to have it inked Anyway, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I do think if if pen makers learn the basics of tuning, yep. I, I get it that it takes more time to get something out the door. But your customer in the end will very likely be happier. Yeah. Maybe this is something that could be worked into pen shows where the, I mean, they do have nib smoothing workshops, but it is during the show. No one can go if they're at a table. It would be interesting to see it more like a conference where you have a week-long thing Mm -hmm. with people doing presentations on pens, a full workshop where everyone has the opportunity to attend a nib smoothing or something. I mean, this is just a fantasy of having it be, I guess, more real. (laughs) Well, you know, well, how about even one of the Nibmeisters attending that pen show, you know, an hour before the show starts or before they would typically set up, offer their services for vendors. So that that, would be uh, like a seminar for vendors to attend so that they could learn just the basics. That's a really good idea. Yeah. So hopefully that gets kind of integrated somehow yeah but i agree it would yeah. I, I mean i think your your pen should write and I, that, that that goes not just for artisan pens but you know indeed every pen i mean not not yeah. a week goes by on any of our pen forums that we yeah are that people are saying oh i think the latest one was someone with um an esterbrook jr right How, not working not, not working not writing at all like oh, just dear yeah frustrating I mean, th- right it is frustrating and I mean, maybe it's because I don't buy a lot of new pens anymore. I buy a lot of used pens. So they almost always write. 
there you go. There's a reason to buy a used pen. <laughs> Chances are it's going to write. <laughs> Someone will have already fixed it, most likely. I got to remember that for myself. So let us carry on. This one is, would love to second the communication and transparency aspect. I have a maker pen that has a cracked cap and I've been unable to contact the maker and it has been months. It was such an investment for me. So not to be able to contact them after the fact is after the fact is like a negative for sure. Or, yeah. Yeah. And it is intimidating to commission a pen and just knowing what to expect. A maker's process and pricing would be very helpful. That's that's rough. I have had one or two maker pens that have had cracks. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the makers in question were very responsive, dealt with it right away. Mm -hmm. They didn't really apologize because which is I'm glad because it can happen. And sometimes it happens because there's a spot that got stressed or something or something that's out of their control. So they didn't say like, I'm, I'm sorry that I did this to your pen. It's mm -hmm. more like, sorry that you have to send it back to me. Let me take care of it for you. Like it has gotten resolved. But I also don't want makers to think that in a case like this, it's their fault or something so that maybe they're intimidated to reply. But it's like, please don't just just reply. Even if you are unwilling to fix it, at least tell the person so they know. Yeah, I think that's a tough one if you're unwilling to fix it. I really think you should yeah. stand by You your, You should. You should. Product. And many makers, I think, will stand by their pen, even if you're not the original, original owner, because yeah. they know it's their pen. And, it's, yeah. and as long as it's something not as a result of abuse, obviously, yeah. right? Right, um, right. It's happened, you know, a few times with me where... I've had some issues with pens and mm -hmm. the makers have all acknowledged that, you know, it shouldn't have gone out that way. Apologies. Cause you know, they're yeah. human and they miss things, but they just, yeah. they make it right. And I mean, we're talking about hundreds of dollars that are just, that's not inexpensive. Right. And especially cause it's, a <laughs> <laughs> that's right. you know, hundreds of dollars for a car would be yeah. fine. But... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but for a pen, yeah, it's mm -hmm. um, disconcerting and uh, it's frustrating, right. When, yeah. when you don't get a response, I've, I'm actually experiencing that right now with a maker that has not responded timely. Mm -hmm. And I think I still have faith that he will respond, mm -hmm. but it, it sometimes is days, if not weeks go by without, yeah. you know, a response. And yeah. every time he posts something on Instagram, I rush to my messages to, to, see. Tr to try and send something so that yeah. it will pop up right away. Because not right. Like really catch them while catch, they're still yeah. on their phone. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I know that unlike me, some of them don't live on Instagram right. 24 seven, right? <laughs> right. And they may pop in every few days or every yeah. week or so. But it's very frustrating, especially when you have already paid for the product. Yes. And yes. you don't have the product or there's something wrong with it. And you're yeah. still left in limbo trying to get it resolved. Right. You just want an answer. Or just some transparency. Yeah. Just want to know what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that is perfectly fair. And I don't know. I don't. I also don't want to harass people. But yeah. it's like if you don't respond to any of my messages, I'm probably going to email you. Yeah, that's right. You know, and if you don't, if you don't respond to an email, I'm probably going to phone you. Yeah. Which is right. everybody's worst nightmare. That's right. So. <laughs> and let alone yeah. maybe at the very end as a last resort, call you out. Yes. And and that is the last thing I think Nobody for most that. people, that is the last thing that they want to do. Yeah. But they're frustrated um, and desperate. Yeah. And I look forward to the maker feedback for the pen community because I'm sure something like that will come up, like this yeah. whole topic will come up. Okay, here we have, it's okay to not take commissions, especially with the handmade nature of resins, pens might not look quite like what the commissioner wants anyway. So what does that mean? Like, it's okay not to take commissions? Like, oh, uh, are so you just do that... stock pens. I see. Oh, okay. Got it. And You're... then so the kind pen... of do drops. So Black right. Robin pens does that. Mayfair does that every now and then. Mayfair does take commissions. Mad Science. Mad Science does yeah. does drops. Yeah, no, I think Meg does commissions, but she's all, oh, wait, not she, right now, but I think. Yes, yes. She um, does take commissions, but she does stock pens. Yes. I think most yeah. pen makers do stock pens interspersed yeah. with commissions. I and, mean, in a way, that is very exciting. 
Yeah. Because it, I mean, it's a thrill. You don't know what's going to get dropped. So also you get to see what the final pen looks like. Yes. Because I don't don't know if we've talked about this. I'm sure we would have talked about this, but it's so hard to know exactly what your pen is going to look like for a lot of these blanks because they differ. They're hand poured and you just don't know what it's going to look like. And I have had, unfortunately, experiences where I think it's in my mind, it's going to look a certain way. Yeah. In the end, it doesn't. And (laughs) And yeah. sometimes I purchase the pen anyway, because I feel bad and I've agreed to purchase yes. it. Yes. Yeah. But after a while, I've said, listen, I don't want to commission it because I don't want to commit to something. I don't know what it looks like. And some yeah. makers have been very good in saying, listen, if you're not happy with it, you don't have to buy it. And I'm thinking, right. well, okay, if you're okay. And you're that, taking okay them that. For their, at their word. Yeah. That yeah. This is what they're okay with. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I used to tell you, once I had a, I had purchased a blank, very excited about it, had the maker make the pen, and we both looked at it. We were like, ew. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they were like, yeah, you don't, you don't need to buy this. And, and I was like, I will, because mm-hmm. it is a commission. They were like, no, don't. Yeah. Don't worry about it. That's nice. <laughs> um, that was pretty funny. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's great when people do drops like that, because of course, the bad part is, you know, you're stalking their site, you're like, <laughs> trying. To yeah. Jump. And then you find out like one of your good friends got the pen you wanted. They're not a good friend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like they're dead to me now. Um, or you and have, I think this is why pen shows are great. Or you have five people. Yeah. On your behalf, oh gosh, I know. Trying to buy the pen for you, <laughs> I know. Ugh. It's like someone needs to get this, I know. and I'll just reimburse you. Just go, go, go. <laughs> just work, work for it. Yeah. So go to pen shows. That's the best way. Okay. Don't be afraid to play with shapes or combine colors or add metal to make your pens just a little more your own. Standing out is probably the hardest thing. Yes, that's a good point. I agree. Uh, not not all pen makers take that approach, right? I think some of them just want to, they're comfortable making this model pen and that's the pen model that they're going to make. And they're happy with, I guess, a pretty ink stick, right? That's yeah. What it and there's nothing being. wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that because people know what to expect, right? Yes. And also, but it doesn't necessarily stand out. It doesn't stand out. I remember yeah. once I um I purchased that uh, Franklin Christoph, is it 48 pen case? You know, the yep. little briefcase thingy, whatever. Yep. And I mostly put my custom pens in there and I took a picture of it from the top to show all yep. the pens. And I love it because I can see right away all my custom pens and I know exactly where each one is. Yeah. Anyway, I posted that and I said, and I said, Hey makers, you know, can you spot your pens? Yeah. And it's really funny because Right away, a few of them say, I know which ones are mine. Like you can see right away yeah. the, the telltale shape, right? So yeah, yeah. it's pretty interesting to be able to just point right away. I know, you know, for sure this one's mine, this one's mine, this yeah. one's mine. So even something simple, like it doesn't okay. have to be ornate or complicated. Right. It could just be some a simple little thing, yeah. a little um, like artist signature kind of thing. Uh, I do like that idea. Don't skimp on the threads. Balky threads. Balky? Bulky? Maybe bulky. I'm not sure if that's a typo or anyway. Uh, probably the most bulky, annoying thing to have on a pen. Bulky threads are yeah. probably the most annoying thing to have on a pen. So maybe don't skimp on the threads, meaning pay, pay attention. attention to it. Yeah, pay yeah. attention to the threads. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't leave them dirty or messy or poorly or cut or cut yeah. yeah 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 make sure they're um, smooth and especially if you're doing just a straight ink stick yeah like the last thing you want is the one standout feature being crappy threads yeah <laughs> right you know which threads i really like is um chris from butterknife he has these square threads yes yes i really really love because it's totally smooth and it's really cool because the threads are it's thick like it's right not, not thick it's wide i guess they're, they're really flat but wide mm-hmm. if you know what i mean um, yeah, yeah 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 it's almost like a hook system like the, the viscosity yeah, yeah, yeah. Uses, exactly but, you know it works i really really liked it the, <laughs> unfortunately i still don't own that pen because he only puts it i think on his bigger girthier 15 millimeter model right right i think in the end i sold that pen i was hanging on to it for the longest time because too big yeah it was too big and i Mm -hmm. just um ended up selling it but well perhaps one day he will do a 13 millimeter do a smaller yeah yeah maybe (laughs) maybe but yes okay please pay attention to your threads (laughs) yeah uh, kind of in, in in line with the previous comment, focus on different styles or filling designs as well as materials. Mm-hmm. Um, there are so many makers making similar designs with nearly identical materials and charging a premium for it. And of course, 
they are pens. They have a certain shape. Right. So many of them are going to resemble one another. Yeah. But yes, doing something, just something to make it your own. yours. And even if it's just like a dip in the barrel that you do where people can put their thumb or something, I don't know, like a yeah. like a fidget type thing. Yeah. Anything to, it doesn't have to be complicated. It could just be anything to stand out. So mm-hmm. that is pretty cool and And different filling systems is cool as well to yeah not not that i'm a fan of different filling systems i i like converters but some people i know (laughs) and i get it (laughs) some people i mean some makers will rebuild existing pens Mm -hmm. especially if the material is damaged um like sean newton is a good good example of that and he's on the pelican uh twiz pens does yeah a wicked job yeah this is artisanal oh, and yeah. and in that case i would just say expect a premium because that That's is right a skill it is yeah. time consuming it's intimidating especially if you're using a material that is like the last rod on earth yes <laughs> <laughs> you know like no pressure I but know. don't mess up so <laughs> um but in that case of course i would assume that one would expect a lengthy waiting time a complicated process but be okay with it Okay. Ooh, this is interesting. Okay. So number one, it is not okay to charge a thousand plus dollars for a plastic pen. I don't think I've ever paid that much for a custom pen, but with particular materials and add-ons, I could see how it could happen. Yeah. I, it is controversial in a way because um, you, you just don't have to buy it. Uh, that's right? true. Part, part that's of true. Is, and, and I don't think I've ever seen a pen maker gouge the customer from that perspective like i don't uh, like usually if it's if it's gonna be a thousand a plastic pen for a thousand dollars i don't think i've ever seen that but i mean i've seen a plastic pen with rodden on it and rushi right and then it you know right. gets up to the top tier almost yeah. four i mean figures. that that leaves a bit of room for interpretation yeah because the following point is precious resin is not precious which is true it's just a, a marketing term yeah but, um, oh so maybe that's it the maybe that's about. what it maybe that's what it is although that is of course that is not what makers do right in that they're not using precious resin right um they're just using resin yeah <laughs> or acrylic or cellulose acetate or yeah. whatever but in that case if something like the arcocelluloid which goes for like hundreds of dollars a rod that's i mean that's supply and demand that's the way it goes right yeah yeah um is it ridiculous to charge that much oh maybe, yeah maybe right but 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 if you if someone it, can afford it and that's what they want they're gonna pay for it and they're gonna pay for it and people are just um, gonna say sellers are just gonna say it's the market price yeah, I mean, the market will bear what people will spend. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> this is a very good point. Warn customers if the material, for example, celluloid, that the maker is using can shrink, discolor, or catch fire. Yes. I do think material warnings are very neglected, mm-hmm. very important. Ryan Krusak works with wood and is always careful to let the buyer know how to treat the pen because it's apparently very easy to damage it with heat. So like, Makes don't sense. leave your pen in a car. So <laughs> Makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and But it's it's nice to have a maker who understands the material to yeah. explain that. And I mean, also, I just use general common sense, but specifically like celluloid, that is something that can crystallize, discolor, shrink, change, warp. Um, but you know that because you've been in this game I know so that, years. but, like, but Somebody who is just new or has never worked with celluloid, no never idea. Heard of it, yeah. No idea. Yeah. Same and so thing. I do think it's a good idea. Same thing like uh, my first time I bought a case and pen. Yes. Beautiful yes. material. But I actually found that it actually does shrink over time. Right. And right. it's not really that big of a deal, except as you know, I like to store my pens separately from my nibs. Yes. And when I went to then screw in the nib into the pen, I thought, yeah, all of a sudden it doesn't fit. Right. And so there are issues with that. You just, not a big deal. You just have to know how to yep. use your pen, treat it, et cetera. The other, the, the other big thing yep. for me is, and I don't think it's an issue for you, miss, I like to sniff everything. <laughs> <laughs> is, yes. it, is it celluloid or that material that um, the camphor kind of smell? Yeah. What 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 material is that? That is, that is celluloid. Celluloid, yep. yeah. 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 If you sell me a celluloid pen, please tell me that that's what it is and it's going to smell like that for <gasps> months and months, if not years afterwards. Candace, I would buy celluloid. Just for and, that. And I like, know. I would, I was going to say I would rub it just for that smell. <laughs> 
I've I personally I love that. And you remember you had a, a pen that Pe- was acrylic. And remember I had Captain and I was yeah. like <laughs> you almost passed out. It was, it was so strong. strong. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm so dizzy. And then I did it again because I very much enjoyed that smell, but I'm a sniffer. Yeah. So not everybody is. But I think that is a fun way that pen makers can educate buyers about their work Mm -hmm. and while also educating the pen community as a whole so i know they're already contributing by doing the hard work of making pretty pens but i think it would (laughs) they need to benefit them yeah like work (laughs) harder Uh, quit your day job i know (laughs) Uh, i think it would be really beneficial okay if you're charging over 400 dollars for a pen it should have a gold nib Mm, false that's what i think that is that is tough. That's controversial because that is controversial. I totally paid four hundred dollars for a steel nib. It depends on the material. Yeah, this is a this would be ideal. Yes, I would love it that a four hundred dollar pen would come with a gold nib. That would certainly cut into <clears throat> the margins for the maker. I don't think a lot of makers would be able to absorb this as a as a cost. Yeah, offering gold nib a, as a upgrade. Sure. It would be lovely, but I don't see it happening. Well, I mean, I think it it just depends. Like if it's $400, it can come with a gold nib if you have a regular resin pour. Yes, that's true. That your your, your pen would normally be $175, for example, and then you add $120 or whatever the typical, that's typically kind of like a gold nib price. Right. Then yeah, it would be with a gold nib. Yeah. But if you And have... there are some models of pens with standard resin, right. but the model is what's time consuming, so that costs more. Right. Worse yet if you have a complicated material with a complicated right. model shape and facets and stuff. Yeah. It, yeah. Stuff like, uh, like if you have an Opex yeah. Opal pen, it's going to yeah. cost more. If you're going to have a um an abalone type material on the pen, yeah, that's going to cost more. With a steel Could nib. you imagine a Newton Prospector in the Operex Opal? I'm oh, sure that would be... That would be, first of all, it would cost a fortune, yeah. but it would be to die for. Yeah. I'm going to have to reach out to him. <laughs> <laughs> just just to inquire, just out of curiosity, have you yeah. ever done this before? Or would you be willing? Um, yeah, I don't know if he... Yeah. I, I haven't seen him do the... I don't I, know. I, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but the Operex Opal material is beautiful, but not every maker will do it because it does come with some health hazards. Yes. It's it's, uh, made of silica. And I think you really have to be mindful that you're not inhaling it. And so you have to be well ventilated. You you need good ventilation. You need a mask. Like don't do that in your bedroom kind of thing. Yeah. It is very interesting to know that about material though. Yeah. Okay. Let me keep going here. Let me see. Um, How much Arco (laughs) bronze can there possibly be? It hasn't been made for years and yet it keeps coming. That is hilarious. Um, (laughs) It is a totally manufactured market in that some, a a few people must have hoarded the material. Hoarded. Yeah. And I don't know how big the rods are, but I don't think they are like the little four inch blanks that we sometimes get for resins. Um, I think they yeah, are significantly long, aren't they? large. Yeah. yeah, I think they're significantly larger. And I don't know how all the pens are being made, but I think that if they're in the sheets, they can be rolled around the barrel instead of drilled out right. as a pen. So it's a very fair point. I do not own any Arco bronze anymore. Um, I totally loved it. But at some point I looked at it and I thought, I just have this pen because this is the pen that people want. In demand and it's not what you yeah. want. Yeah. And I was like, I don't even want this. And <laughs> so I ended up selling it and got the material that I actually liked, which is also celluloid. It's the black and white Omas, the Galileo. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that one just floats my boat. So but that's really funny about Arco Browns. And it's fun to kind of predict what the next material will be like that. Um, Do you think the Arco Bronze is still as popular or because... I don't people, think so. Because it keeps coming I think the market is saturated yeah. with it. Yeah. Not necessarily with pens that everyone can use. Like some of them are too expensive. Right. Or um, too big, too heavy, yeah. boring nibs, whatever. Yeah. But I do not see the craze like I used to. Okay, and then last, if you release more limited editions than standard models, it's the standard models that are rare. Is that for, I'm trying to think if that applies to... Art, artisans and makers? I don't yeah. think so. 
I mean, that kind of makes me think of like Sailor. Yeah. <laughs> with with their um with their four standard pens. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The, the burgundy and black one, and then and then everything. Oh my else god, is- that that's hilarious. Okay, that is not maker related, but that is pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we should totally do an episode of thoughts for pen manufacturers. Yeah, I think that's know? a good idea. And then hopefully they'll hear our pleas or something. But yeah, I this was really fun. It I was. mean, I hope this has been educational and helpful for makers. I think so. So I did get a message from a maker who said that they found this to be quite informative because mm-hmm. sometimes I think, you know, like with anything that maybe you create or produce, yeah. you're a bit afraid of criticism and maybe you don't want to ask people yeah. for uh, Oh feedback. yeah. It's like, please hurt my feelings. I know. Right? It's like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. like I mentioned last week about Rich reaching out, I thought that was really brave yeah. of him. And um, that is that is scary. Yeah. And so I think for that maker that reached out said that they like this episode or this idea and were listening yep. to it because they don't necessarily get that kind of feedback right. on their own. Right. right. So, yeah. Um, and I I could totally understand how that would be intimidating yeah. and scary and I'm not a maker, but even when I do workshops or send out a package or something, I'm always nervous, mm-hmm. you know, and makers are humans. They could have an off day. Things can happen. So I do, do try to be kind about everything. Do you know what I think know? is the coolest? And also, I think the scariest thing is that, you know how the makers have their secret Santa? Yes, so they all, I don't know if your listeners are yeah. aware of it, but they, but they all, a bunch of them get together and they draw names and all right. among makers and they make a pen of theirs and send yeah. it to the other maker. So that is I think so it's, cute. I think it's really cute because you see all these other makers, you know, posting on Instagram pens received from other makers, yeah. which yeah. is great. But it's also, I mean, that must be horrifying because you're I know. sending your pen to be examined. And like, what if you're new? <laughs> I know. Right? And it's like, you have to send it to someone who's been making for years. I and know. It's, legend. it's like, okay, <laughs> you know. But I do think the maker community is very supportive of each other. Yeah. And helping each other out when it comes to how could I do this or how can I improve that? So I, I think that's really cool. Yeah. And um, I'll continue to buy your pens. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Yeah. That's everything commentary wise that was appropriate to share. <laughs> no, there was there was nothing else. Um, I, I think all of these points are are totally valid. And um, I don't know any final thoughts. Um, no, I mean we. I look forward to hearing what the pen makers have to say. Yes, and, yes. Um, you know, of course, you don't have to stop here. You can always drop us a line and or comment about anything yeah. related yep. to pens or stationery at any time. Even if you just want to email in your thoughts because you missed this particular window, we yep. will happily still talk about it. Absolutely. And I think that would actually be really cool. And hopefully this will be a way to improve things between makers and buyers just to make everything better for everybody. Absolutely. So, okay. Uh, so my dinner is sitting next to me. Okay. Getting cold. <laughs> it's totally cold already, but I want to eat it. So... <laughs> However, this was very cool. Thank you, everyone, for participating and for your feedback. Much appreciated. And um, that's that's pretty much it. We will be resuming kind of the usual next time. Sort of. We'll see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sort of. Uh, anyway, have a good one. This is Aziza, a.k.a. Gourmet Pens. And please also remember to check out the shop because there's lots of cool stuff there. And this is Candice, a.k.a. Inks and Anchors. Bye! Bye. This podcast was sponsored by Gourmet Pen Shop. Need some tools for slinging ink? Samples to explore? Hop on over to GourmetPenShop.com and consider supporting us by picking up some cool new stuff. And if you like what you hear, please give us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. My favorite TV shows of all kind. I do love a good drama series, right? Like mm-hmm. This Is Us or whatever. But I love British detective sh- series or shows. Like Matlock? No. <laughs> Matlock is not British. <laughs> and is oh, not no. Oh, no. Which one, which one was? 
Um, the one shoot, there was one. Of course, that I, I forget. I forget all the names of them. Of course, yeah, yeah. There's all one the I names used to them. watch anyway. But they're um, all actual British shows, detective shows. They're, they seem to be. I think they're just really, really good. And they have so they're all like DCI Homes or DCI something, or the DCIs have some obviously some crutch or some some issue with their lives. It's either a, like a failed marriage or maybe drinking or whatever. But there's this background story. But the cases are quite good. And I don't know. I just they all seem to be really good. Yeah. I, I love a good cry when it comes to like a good movie and a good show and yeah being that intense no and... see i could cry about my life so i don't need external i prefer to cry about other people's lives <laughs> <laughs> man gee, you might want to cut that entire thing out. <laughs>